In this video, we'll be talking about fonts and font sizes. We'll discuss the different font sizes that you can use for different sections of your poster. We'll talk about bold, italics, and regular text and when to use them. We'll discuss text alignment as well as give you some general rules when it comes to text. Now it's time to talk about fonts and font sizes. We have already touched on fonts a little bit already when I said that you should use dark font colors on a lighter background and that you should use consistent font colors throughout your poster. But which fonts should you use? The rule here is to keep things simple. Don't use more than one or two different fonts throughout the poster. It can be useful to use a couple of different fonts, for instance, to highlight something on your poster. But using more than one or two fonts and things start looking a little more confusing and sloppy. Typically, some of the popular fonts are Helvetica or Arial, Futura, Trade Gothic, Garamond, and Franklin Gothic. The internet makes it easy to download all kinds of different fonts, many for free. Resist that urge if you can. Try to stay with the standard fonts. Don't pick something wacky to just to make it stand out. It ends up looking unprofessional. Try to avoid using drop shadows for small text. People tend to think it makes the text highlighted, but it really just looks blurry. Use drop shadows for large text, like your poster title. There are two major groupings of fonts, serif and sans serif. Serif fonts have little bumps called serifs, and of course sans serifs means without serifs, and they don't have those bumps. The sans serif fonts look a little more modern, and that's why most people use them for their posters. They're also a little bit easier to read. After you've chosen the type of fonts to use, the next thing to think about is the sizes. Different sections of your poster should have different sized fonts. That means the main sections of the poster are the title or heading, the subheadings, and then the body copy and captions for images, charts, and graphs. Obviously, the title should have a large sized font. It's tough to recommend a specific point size because your poster would be enlarged when printed, so 72 point font on your PowerPoint file might actually be 144 point when it's printed on a poster. When you view the poster on your monitor, just make sure the title is readable. Then make sure the subheadings are smaller fonts, but still large enough to differentiate them from the body text. Body copy and captions would be your smaller text. Rather than target a specific point size, just make sure that the text size for each part of your poster is balanced and consistent. If the relative size of each part looks good on your monitor, your poster will look great. This is where bold, italics, and regular text come into play as well. Your title and subheadline should be bold text, and your body copy should be regular text without being bold or italicized. Captions are often in italics. Finally, we need to talk about text alignment. Your text should almost always be left aligned. Many people feel that the body copy in their poster should be justified, but resist that urge. Usually, left justified looks better. Justified text is often hard to read, and it can contain weird rivers in the middle of the text. Of course, your poster title should be centered, along with the subtitle uh, underneath it, and captions can be centered directly under images, charts, and graphs, if you like. That's all for this video. Find more at MakeSigns.com.